Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to answer a few questions that have come up on what I think is actually the, the most watched video on my channel right now, which is uh, using OpenSSL to create and uh, sign, uh, well, certificates. Uh, and I do specifically want to just call them certificates and not SSL certificates. Um, because realistically, that video uh, it, it is uh, is general enough, uh, whether you're using the certificates for SSL or for anything else that might require certificates, that video applies. 99% of the time, we are using it for SSL, or as it's more properly called these days, uh, TLS. So... Um, I do want to kind of clear up some of the some of the misconceptions uh, that have been asked about on that video, and hopefully this will help you uh, get a little bit further with uh, what that video describes. So first off, uh, one of the questions was basically along the lines of how do I take these certificates that I'm using and uh, actually use them for HTTPS? How do I install them into my web hosting environment. Uh, the problem with that question is that there's a lot of different answers depending on how you're actually doing your hosting. Um, so I have a few recommendations. My first recommendation is that if you're using a hosting platform, they most likely have something that, that more or less kind of wraps uh, OpenSSL. So some tooling that they provide uh, that not only does what I show in that video, but also does the heavy lifting of installing it into your website uh, and making sure that it works. If your hosting provider has something like that, follow their directions, do what they recommend. Uh, your life will be a lot easier if, you're, if you do that. You might be able to use the instructions that I have in that video using OpenSSL from the command line, uh, but Invariably, there will be a step where you have to export what you've created with OpenSSL and send it to them to get signed and then bring it back and then manually install it into your website. That's just a pain. If they have a tool that does all that for you, just use the tool. Um, if you're using an AWS service, one of the AWS services, um, like uh, Elastic Load Balancing or... Uh, Elastic Container Service, ECS, EKS, the Kubernetes version, um, they all tie in with things like, uh, oh, I forget what it's, what it's called, uh, can, the, can, the, um, the certificate service. Um, but you can create SSL certificates through AWS, and it, th then you can, you can just uh, select them for use with, with all those other services. Amazon makes it really easy. Uh, if you're using a dedicated hosting provider, something like DreamHost, or um, that's the one that comes to mind, but like a, a company that does hosting, they typically sell you the host and the, the hosting solution and the SSL as a bundle. Uh, so you can just check that box and say, yes, I want an SSL certificate. Um, you might have to go through some, some additional steps to actually, you know, put in the host name that you're going to use to, to access the box and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but they'll give you an SSL certificate. So it makes it really easy. Others, similar sort of process. Um, now, if you are using a VPS, a virtual private server, or in Amazon, if you're using something like uh, EC2, which is just a VM in the cloud, uh, and managing the entire machine, uh, you can configure something like Nginx or uh, Apache uh, to use an SSL certificate that you have created uh, on your own, uh, either using the instructions that I have uh, in, in that video, which by the way, I'll leave a link down in the video description below if you haven't seen that video, um, or by using something like, like Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is awesome. Let's Encrypt gives you a fully valid a certificate for 90 days and then they, they have a set of tooling around that that makes it really easy uh, to configure it with just a bare website with uh, Nginx, Apache um, and automatically renew it on, on, with some frequency. So really cool tool. I, I recommend checking that out. Um, 
But at that point, you're manually maintaining the SSL certificates that get installed with your uh, either Nginx or Apache. Um, in general, the way this works is that your the actual certificate files go into a directory structure under uh, etsy etc slash ssl um, and then your individual server configuration files point to the appropriate ssl certificate um, i'll actually do a deeper dive on this uh, a little bit later um, probably do one on nginx and one on apache personally i use Nginx all the time, so uh, that one will be a, a lot easier for me to do. Um, I'll have to actually stand up an Apache web server in order to do the Apache video. Uh, but those will be coming in the next the next few weeks or so. Um, if you are particularly interested in those videos, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know that, that you're uh, anxiously awaiting uh, their release. Now, finally, the um, I, I mentioned that uh, even if you manually install your certificate, you would have to, uh, and you were using OpenSSL, you would have to use OpenSSL, send your certificate to uh, the, the hosting provider or someone, a certificate issuer, uh, and they would sign it and send it back to you. The reason for that is because of the way that SSL certificates work. They're not just a public key private key pair that provides for encryption they are that and that's why actually the open SSL video doesn't necessarily have to be used for HTTPS or even SSL it is just a public key private key pair uh, packaged up as a certificate which means it's th that that key that binary data with some additional information about it the nice thing about certificates is that they can also be signed, which means not only is there some uh, encryption, encryption key data and some data about it, you know, issuer, um, who it was issued to, all, all that good information, um, but there can also be a chain of trust associated with it. So basically, uh, someone can say, this key is in fact relevant to the the person that uh, it says it is and uh, here is my my stamp of authenticity uh, which is they use their private key to sign your public key you know the certificate um, and then that signature becomes part of the certificate it's important that there is some chain of trust um, because just the, the, the fact that someone else has signed your certificate doesn't necessarily mean anything if that someone else is not also trustworthy, right? There are peer-to-peer -peer, uh, key signing uh, rings, I suppose you could call them. Um, and that's, that's great if you trust the people in that group. Um, but the way HTTPS and the way SSL works is typically a little more hierarchical. So every computer, every browser on every computer has installed with it a set of root certificate authority certificates. Basically, these are the public certificates uh, for, I forget exactly how many, but I'm, I'm going to say about 20 or 30, um, root certificate authorities. And these are large companies or uh, well uh, well-esteemed companies that have gotten together and said uh, we all trust each other and we will sign certificates for other people and by the fact that we sign these certificates that means they are valid uh, they keep the, the private key and that's what they use to sign other people's certificates uh, and they distribute the public key which is what web browsers can use to validate the signatures of, of these other certificates that they've signed. And basically what that means is that in order for a browser to trust your certificate, your certificate needs to be signed by either one of these root certificate authorities or a certificate authority that has itself been signed by one of these root certificate authorities or you could potentially have any length of chain 
uh, in between. It just, the browser needs to verify every single certificate all the way up to, uh, all the way up the chain until it gets to a root certificate authority. If there is no chain of trust that goes up to a root certificate authority, most browsers by default will not allow SSL connections to that, to that, that website, or they'll, uh, send up a flag. They'll, you know, the, the lock will be unlocked and read and, uh, you know, all sorts of scary things and say, this website is not secure, that sort of thing. You can get around that in say intranet settings. That's, uh, intra, um, you know, corporate network, that sort of thing. A corporate, a company might create their own root CA and install that on all of the corporate computers so that they can very quickly and easily sign certificates for, you know, whatever the intranet services are. Uh, and then their corporate computers can log in and, and, and be trusted. The, the, all those sites will be trusted uh, because they do go up to, as far as the computer is concerned, a root certificate certificate authority. However, if you are just running your own website and you create your own certificate authority certificate and start signing certificates, nobody has the public certificate for your your new root CA. So no machine on the internet is going to trust it. Um, this was a question that was particularly called out on, on that video. Uh, I think it went something like, uh, I've created a, uh, I, I followed all your instructions. I've created my own certificate, installed it on my, my website. But when I go to, uh, you know, I pull it up on my laptop and Firefox doesn't trust it. And that's because Firefox doesn't know about your root CA certificate. One thing you could do is install your public, uh, the, the public key, the, the, the actual CA certificate that you've created on your laptop. However, I do not recommend doing that because uh, that's not what everybody else in the world is going to be doing. I recommend that whatever certificate that you use to uh, protect your, your SSL instance, that you get it signed by someone who does have that chain of trust up to a, a well-respected, widely known root CA. Um, now you might be asking, okay, so these are, you know, private keys or sorry, public keys that are created by, you know, these 20 or 30 different companies and then distributed. What happens if a new one shows up or what happens if one of those gets compromised or something like that? Well, that's, that's totally valid. Um, what happens is that those certificates get revoked, the private key gets thrown away, the, those certificate authorities create brand new ones, um, they re-sign everything that they've signed, uh, and hopefully that propagates down their, their chain of trust. Um, their public certificate, the CA certificate piece, gets distributed to operating system manufacturers, uh, browser vendors, and they package this new certificate with the next update of your, you know, Chrome or Firefox. And then that gets, you know, the next time people upgrade to Chrome or Firefox, the, the latest version of Chrome or Firefox, they get that latest batch of CA certificates. So yeah, it is a little bit of a, a painful process if something like that has to happen. But these private keys, for the, especially for the root CAs, are kept under tight security safeguards. Um, so I tried looking for it, uh, an instance where something like this had happened and couldn't find one. I thought there was one that had happened a few years ago, but it turns out that the most likely situation that happened was that the, all of the private keys or the, yeah, the private keys that had been signed with this, uh, um, with a particular root CA, um, those had been compromised uh, in in bulk, so those those had to be uh, all resigned. Uh, it wasn't a case of the private the actual private key getting compromised. Um, so I think that's all the questions that I got in or that I noticed that I made a note of for this video. Uh, but if you have another question that I didn't answer regarding how to use OpenSSL for uh, 
SSL certificates or just uh, asymmetric key encryption certificates in general, or how to use that specifically for HTTPS, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, and if I get enough questions about it, I'll make another video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.